Welcome to the 21st in this series of lectures on statistical process improvement and statistical quality assurance. The point of this particular module is to say that what is learned in elementary statistics courses about confidence limits for differences in proportions and for paired differences is relevant to the analysis of uh, go no go data and in particular making comparisons uh, between operators. To begin with there is a standard formula from basic statistics that says that if I'm trying to estimate a difference in two proportions P1 and P2 I might take two samples, a sample from each of the two populations and uh, take the difference in the sample proportions and hedge that uh, by this factor z times this square root. That formula appears in many statistical texts. As it turns out, that formula uh, can fail to hold its nominal confidence level pretty badly uh, if sample sizes are small. That is, that, that interval uh, can uh, particularly for extreme values of P1 and P2 can, can just be too short and have confidence level that really isn't say the 90% uh, that one expects when one uses Z of 1.645. So instead of using that, uh, what we're going to use here in this module is a modification of it that basically changes only what's underneath that square root. And it does so by replacing the p hats, p hat 1 and p hat 2 with what we're going to call p tilde 1 and p tilde 2. Uh, this is only for purposes of, again, changing the size of this uh, square root to make the interval a bit longer uh, and there, thereby make it have uh, appropriate coverage 90% uh, intervals being 90% intervals. Uh, what we're going to do is essentially add two successes and two uh, in, in four additional trials, so it'll be two successes and two failures uh, in four additional trials. Absolutely, completely fictitious uh, four additional trials and fictitious successes and, and, and failures. Uh, but what that does is to uh, pull P times 1 minus P or P hat, P tilde times 1 minus p hat or p tilde, it makes it a bit, a bit larger and makes the interval uh, be really uh, a 90% interval uh, if one's making 90% nominal confidence, nominally is using 90% confidence. Uh, another point is from elementary statistics, uh, in a answers a different question, and that is whether uh, across parts, rather than for a particular part, uh, zero one call rates for operators differ. Okay, so there's these limits might be used to say whether part, whether operator one and operator two differ on their call rate for a particular part, uh, whereas a different question is whether on average they differ uh, across parts. Uh, that can be approached using the pair difference uh, T interval. Uh, that is, the mean difference uh, can be estimated by making uh, differences in p hats and finding their average and their standard deviation, sample average and standard deviation, and then 
using, so there's a difference in p hats, and then using the t interval formula for a mean, uh, where the quote unquote sample size is the number of parts, and therefore one has a uh, number of parts minus one degrees of freedom associated with the with the uh, with the t value. As an illustration, uh, we'll use again the fictitious data from module 20. Uh, there we had one, two, three, four, five parts and one, two, three operators, but for this, for our purposes here, we're going to uh, pay attention only to operators one and two. Uh, we're going to do two things. We'll compare how operators call uh, part number one. So we'll compare those two values and then we're going to compare how operators call parts on average. Uh, considering first just part one, uh, this 20% is based on two non-conforming calls out of 10. And the 40% is based on four non-conforming calls out of 10. What we can do is add four fictitious additional uh, inspections and two non-conforming calls uh, to both of those experiences. Rather than two over 10, we're going to take two plus two over 10 plus four. And instead of four over 10, we're going to take four plus two over 10 plus four in order to get what goes exactly right there uh, underneath those square roots. Now, we didn't change, we absolutely did not change the 20% and the 40% that uh, is the fractions, the, the empirical fractions, the real fractions out front. We only changed what goes underneath that uh, square root in order to make that uh, square root term a little bit bigger. Now the difference between 20% and 40% is minus 20%. Uh, if we use 1.96 there, uh, then we get approximate 95% uh, confidence, and so 20% or minus 20%, plus or minus 49%, uh, shows us that uh, we don't really know whether operator 1 tends to call part 1 non-conforming more often than does part number 2, or sorry, operator number 2, or which way it goes. And basically, that difference is smaller than its own margin of error uh, and so uh, we have no clear evidence of the difference between operators 1 and 2 on part 1. A separate question, a different question, is whether there is evidence of a difference between operators 1 and 2 averaged across parts. To address that, uh, one can make differences. So this point, minus point 0.2, is the difference between 0.2 and 0.4. This zero is the difference between 0.6 and 0.6. The difference between 1 and 0.8 is 0.2. The difference between 0.1 and 0.1 is zero. And the difference between 0.1 and 0.3 is minus 0.2. And the idea then is I forget now where these values came from. Uh, they happen to be differences in proportions, but now I'm going to call them, if you will, x's, uh, and I'll find a quote-unquote x bar and an s, or I'll call them d's and find a d bar and an s based on those d's. 
Uh, if one does that, the average of the D's is minus 0.04, and the sample standard deviation of the D's is, one, is 0.167. If I take D bar plus or minus T value S over the square root of the sample size, I get these limits. Now, what sample size are we talking about? We're talking about the number of parts. How many D's do I have? I have five D's. The five D's are processed into a single D bar and a single standard deviation for D's. Uh, the point here is that, again, limits that go from minus 0.04 plus or minus 0.21 to either side uh, cover zero. And we have no clear evidence now that operators 1 and 2 uh, have consistent differences uh, in terms of average probabilities of uh, calling parts non-conforming. That is, uh, there's no clear evidence in these data of, uh, of, of, of reproducibility variation uh, in these data.